WWE shareholders are told that Vince McMahon's exit may hurt the company. Plus, AEW are teasing a major dynamite return, and a WWE Hall of Famer is returning this weekend. It's all in the wrestling news right now. So yesterday, WWE did their quarterly filings with SEC. That's been a, it's been a fun accounting department for WWE oh, for the last few months. My word. To keep finding different receipts down the back of the sofa. Uh, and yesterday, this report came with some comments comments about Vince McMahon's exit included. So it's more to sort of fill in the shareholders that aren't locked into the ebbs and flows of wrestling yeah. news like we are. Yeah, yeah. And, and they basically said, well, they said, on June 17th, 2022, the company and its board of directors announced that a special committee of independent members of our board of directors was formed to investigate alleged misconduct by the company's former chairman and chief executive officer, Vincent K. McMahon. Mr. McMahon resigned from all positions held with the company on July 22nd, 2022, but remains a stockholder with a controlling interest. We know we know all that so far. We do, yes. Um, I'll just, I'll, should I just carry on as a threat? I can carry on if I take a break. No, I'll, I'll, I'll plow on, I'll plow on, I'll plow on, I'll plow on. <laughs> I might need to struggle and then reach for the hot tag though. Yeah, I'll through. be here. Uh, until he resigned from all positions held with the company on July 22nd, 2022, in addition to serving as chairman of our board of directors and CEO, uh, Mr. McMahon led the creative team that develops the storylines and the characters for our programming, including our TV, WWE Network, and other programming and live events. Oh, he's in! Although Mr. Levesque has extensive practical experience with many of our revenue streams and with Ms. McMahon had, has been critically involved in our business transformation over the past several years, as well as our continuing brand development. These collective changes at the top of our organization are extensive and recent, and it is therefore possible that the loss of services of Mr. McMahon could have a material adverse effect on our ability to create popular characters and creative storylines or could otherwise adversely affect our operations and or our financial performance. Now, to me, reading that, the initial response as a wrestling fan who's dialed in with everything that's happening in the world of wrestling and, and pays attention week on week, that seems silly because, as we've seen, the general opinion of internet-based Twitter wrestling fans, has, the hardcore, has been, well, Triple H is improving everything. He's improving the characters, improving the storylines. But I guess they've got to look at it in a purely numbers way they've got to say they're not looking at how good uh however objective that can be but how good the quality of the show is they're just looking at how marketable it is and how successful it is they couldn't really put in a in a shareholders meeting yeah but dakota kai returned so shut up exactly yeah right um, yeah. It's, it's more it's more sort of i think it, it they're presenting them with the worst case scenario mm. With, and it's kind of to, to sort of manage expectation a little bit in that sense by them saying that, hey, look, Vince has run this ship for so long, there could be a drop off in business because it's very different. Mm. It's kind of preparing them if the number does dip slightly. Like I, th I think a few people kind of went Bruh! when mm. Raw's rating was lower the week after the first one of the Triple H yeah. regime. And it will dip and move around. Um, I think that... WWE, I think that the key to success creatively is to actually spend some time in building new talent. And exactly. it's not something that will come overnight. You can hot shot the book in all you like. Yeah. But the, the key to success is just going to be to slowly build that and, and get back where you were again that way. Um, but so they're kind of, and I think that's Triple H's plan. Uh, is is sort of that slow burn to get there so therefore they're kind of going look you might see some dips yeah but, but I, th I think i mean i'm no expert on on shares and economics and everything but I, i've always looked at uh, building a successful wrestling company as it's like a, a as you say a slow long-term process with long-term storylines and long-term goals in mind whereas especially in the latter days of the vince reign we saw everything was really short term just moments 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 mm. build to one pay-per-view repeat and, and, it, and i think even though it could see dips and everything, they might be setting themselves up well in the future. Who, who knows though? I feel like that's probably what they're going to do. Uh, now, there were some changes behind the scenes uh, in around all of this, according to Fightful Select, and said in gaining WWE production notes in recent weeks, it became evident that things were being adjusted for WWE producers. I might need to hot tag you on this quote. Okay. Uh, both Joe Hennig and Arya Davari, who you remember were working as producers, had got deep within their training process and had begun producing main event taping matches solo, but then they were both let go. Arya Davari was expected to be hired full time prior to that, but since debuted for ROH and AEW brands as a wrestler. He has mm. since also been signed. In addition, WWE had started doubling up on producer assignments, whereas prior to that, they would primarily get one assignment per show. 
Yes, it, it has went from fairly rare to commonplace to see that now. Also, several segments that would see two producers got stripped back to a producer working them solo, in part because of Davari and Hennig being let go. Jason Jordan, who's been working as a senior producer, rarely specifically was credited with producing televised segments this year. However, that has also changed, and he's been producing much more by the way of TV segments. There were also producers who would outright be taken off the road for a week at the time to limit the cost of them traveling to television. That's the end of the... Oh, it's a heel. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that is yeah. So so basically, there would be some structural changes behind the scene, behind the scenes uh, to WWE that I think will probably continue a little bit as they try and sort of streamline uh, the production scenes. Some good news though from behind the scenes in WWE. Uh, delighted with these WrestleMania ticket sales. They are apparently ecstatic, according to PW Insider. Uh, so far, WWE have distributed almost forty nine thousand tickets for night one and just under fifty thousand for night two of WrestleMania thirty nine. Uh, the stadium capacity, according to Wrestle ticks is 50,532, so that's almost a sellout on both nights. That's with the plan set up. Right. Obviously, it ebbs and flows staging. depending on yeah. where and stuff, but they reckon with the staging that they've got planned for WrestleMania, you're looking at just over 50,000, uh, 50, over 50,500. So, yeah, I think to be, you know, still quite a few months out mm. and to have both nights close to selling out. Mm -hmm. Very exciting for the company. Yeah, if you smell what the rock is. No, oh. I don't know. That's even without any mention of That's, the rock. It's literally just the power of going, it's WrestleMania in LA. Are yeah. you in? Yeah. Legendary Wink Wink, here's the rock. Mm. Um, <laughs> eyes tomorrow night, though, on Dynamite. Yes. Uh, I. Uh, do you know what, right? If it isn't what we think it is. I think they've been really naughty on they've being the elite. They've been really cheeky to us. Really cheeky on being the elite. So on being the elite, uh, Matt Jackson was taking a phone call. Him and Nick, the Young Bucks, had recently been rejected by Hangman Page. They said, can you be our partner for the six-man tournament? They were really toxic about it, Tom. They burst in to his dressing room and went, we, we've brought the camera because we want to apologize to you in front of everyone and how we treated you. And Hangman went, Oh, I'm just going to team with my pals, the Dark Order, instead. And I went, it was my biggest pop of the year for me. I was like, yes. <laughs> and Dark um, Order and Bat Baby. So Matt Jackson was on the phone uh, at the end of being the elite and said, are you sure that you're ready? And if that wasn't enough of a hint, as it faded to black, they played the beginning of Under the Devil's Sky. So it Penny was just Omega's that, thing. they play that little... Yeah, <laughs> just that bit. That little sting. But fans are going to recognise that, obviously. It's not that subtle. Uh, that isn't hint. just like a production drop. No. Like, oh, we'll put a little sweep at the end of it. It's a very deliberate mm. sting that they've put at the end. Not that sting. Um, it's a <laughs> it works in, in the, sting. <laughs> oh. I mean, in the audio sense. <laughs> now, whenever I see a little jingle, I'm going to go, it's sting. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the Bucks and their mystery partner set to compete tomorrow night in West Virginia. Uh, and again, if it's not Kenny Omega, they've been very obvious that That's it's really Kenny cheeky. Omega's music at the end. Are you sure you're ready? If it's not Kenny Omega, then this, this is surely a full heel turn again that they've done this. <laughs> the company turning heel mm. at this rate. Uh, so eyes on that. Oh, he's on the Devil's Sky. We could see Kenny Omega back tomorrow night. Uh, well, we'll see a Hall of Famer back this weekend for WWE, you know. This was out of nowhere. Trish Stratus announced on her website on Monday that she's going to be appearing at the Saturday night's main event house show in Kingston, Ontario, Canada on August 20th. Obviously, she's from Toronto. And uh, as Jack Atkins told us upstairs, because he used to live in Canada, I said, is Kingston near Toronto? And he went, in English sense? And I went, no, in a North America sense. And he went, yes. But you and I wouldn't drive there but Canadians would happily drive there. I was yeah. like, okay, well, fair enough. Because um, we're just from a tiny little island, guys. <laughs> um, back in March as well, she'd made appearances at Canadian house shows as the host of the event, interacting with the likes of Owens, Lynch, and Rhea Ripley across the weekends. But her roles this weekend have not yet been announced. I reckon I could see her doing something with Bailey, EO Sky, and... Dakota Kai. Well, it's like a babyface authority figure almost saying, you're not getting away with this. Either authority figure for the weekend or kind of coming out and going, hello, it's great to be here in Canada. I am your <laughs> Canadian hero. Hello to you. Possibly. Hello to all my friends. Hello, Brittle Star and all my favorite Canadian people. And uh, and then here comes Bailey and friends go, oh, you're Canada sucks. Canada's rubbish. Hey. It's rubbish around here. What are you doing? What's a poutine? You're putting weird stuff <laughs> on chips, weirdos. I'll tell you what, we're going to beat you up. And then here comes Bret Hart. Bret Hart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
it comes Brett out, puts Bailey in a sharpshooter, <laughs> goes, this is for you, Goldberg. <laughs> and the whole show just goes off the rails. Him and Wayne Gretzky raise their hands. Uh, what a great night that'll be. Yeah, so but if you go to the show, Trish Stratus will be there. That's good. Tell us, how, tell us what goes down. Mm. Uh, we'll have more wrestling news throughout the day at cultaholic.com. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.